on the American Artifact series, one of the things that we have featured a lot are bring back items from soldiers and sailors and Marines who fought in World War II. Some of the items that, that may carry a little bit of extra weight though, are ones that were struck by bullets like this flag here behind me. And we're gonna come back to this one in a little bit. But first, we have some other items from the Pacific Theater that were brought back by soldiers with bullet strikes in them. I want to go over some really interesting bullet struck items that we have here at the Gettysburg Museum of History from the Pacific Theater. Um, I'm going to start with this uh, Type 99 Arasaka Japanese rifle. And we have some battle damage here, um, perhaps from shrapnel or something like that. And there's also a chip out of the stock down here. But the most interesting strike is a through and through strike. And uh, I, I used an old bottle rocket. Uh, stick to to illustrate that and later on I'll, I'll flip it around because the exit part of it is is more interesting but it, it has it has the mum up here um, which will mean that it it was captured before the surrender uh, most of the ones that would have been sent back after Jap Japan surrendered they they, they actually uh, removed that symbol so this was this was obtained from one of our pickers and um, you know the ver verbal provenance was it came from Iwo Jima of course everything comes from Iwo Jima but um, it, it, it may or may not have. We have the capture papers for this they're in our files and I, I just made a quick copy for our purposes um, and, and the guy's name was Alfred Bush and he, he was a sergeant and, and he's in an uh, air material squadron so, um, you, you know, it, it may or may not have been Iwo Jima. He may have traded for it, um, you know, because he, he didn't, that doesn't seem like a frontline kind of kind of place, but a lot of stuff would be coming through that area. Um, so, you know, he, they, they, they would make these certificates of release, um, kind of like going through the chain of command or his commanding officer, and they would have to approve that. And so it's, it's, a, it's a pretty interesting rifle, you know, anything bullet struck tends to be um, a favorite of mine at least. So um, we're going to come down here, this, this is a Japanese sword, and um, it's, it's, it's a pretty nice one, it's, it's got some of the, you know, the, uh, the skin handle there, and uh, it's got some of the, the um, items there underneath, and there's, there's the peg, and, um, but and then here's the scabbard. But the, the most interesting thing, of course, is it's struck. It's, it's struck here and it's struck here. And um, one of the projectiles that, that struck this, whether I'm sure this was a bullet, went through the, the scabbard and went through the sword itself. And you can see that, that strike right there. And, you know, uh, struck items are, are great. And you see a lot of struck helmets and things like that. But Getting a struck sword, that's, that's pretty rare. Um, I've only seen a handful of those ever. Um, so, two of my favorite Pacific Theater bringbacks. Unfortunately, we don't know what soldier brought this particular one back. We, we do know who brought this one back. But um, anytime we get a bullet struck item, it, it tends to be one of my favorite pieces. Now, we've just turned this rifle around so that we can get a little bit better look at it. So uh, right here, uh, again, is the marking that we refer to. This is a, a chrysanthemum. Uh, collectors will call that a full mum. And if it's ground out, they call it a ground mum. Uh, if it's partially ground out, it's a, a partial mum. And then right here, uh, that's 9.9. Nine. Okay, so this is a Type 99 rifle. And then here, let me go ahead and just turn this a little bit. There is the exit mark where this rifle was struck. Okay, one other thing that I want to show here on the table. This is a bullet struck helmet. So here you can see the entrance and right back here is the exit. And the soldier who brought this back did a little artwork on it. It says Hill 260. April 1944. So this most likely came 
from the island of Bougainville, which was in the Solomon Islands. Um, Hill 260 was a, a prominent spot. Bougainville was a nasty place. Uh, very, very tough fighting that, that took place there. And uh, Hill 260 was uh, really a site that saw a lot of violence whenever the Japanese uh, launched a counterattack to try and retake the island. Uh, there, there was like the, the largest artillery barrage of the Solomon Island campaign that took place here. And then on Hill 260, there was a company, I believe it was G Company, of the 182nd Infantry Regiment, uh, just over 70 guys, that held out at the top of this hill and defended it. So we, we don't know exactly who brought this back uh, or uh, what regiment or division they were in, but we do know where it was found. So we can get a little bit of the, the history of uh, where this helmet came from. So one of my favorite Japanese flags in our entire collection is this one. It's not the most decorated flag, you know, it doesn't have the, the characteristics or the kanji on it that some of them do and the elaborate artwork, but what it does have is history. And its history is it came from Iwo Jima. And, and what you're seeing here are blood stains. And the way this flag was um, carried was it was folded up in, in a uniform pocket. So this, these holes that you're seeing here are bullet holes and it's one bullet hole. It would have been folded several times into a small piece and then the soldier bled out and this is some of the soldier's blood and you know it's, it's, it's this color because on silk blood turns this color. Um, also, so this flag was taken by an American Marine that was on Iwo Jima during a Banzai charge, and he also took the soldier's ID, and this is the soldier, the Japanese soldier that this flag belonged to. Um, there's also some other items that were taken out of his pocket or off of his uniform, and that is, this is a cigarette pack, and this is, this is um, a patch with some Japanese kanji on it, and these are some other patches that was with the soldier. And um, it's just amazing to think of, of you know, the, the situation and, you know, the last Banzai charges that were happening on Iwo Jima. Um, there's also a series of photographs that were taken. This, this grouping came with uh, about 30 or 40 photographs, and we're going to show you a couple of those photographs right now, including photographs of this actual incident. So here's another look at this flag, and again, we can see the bullet damage that Eric was just referring to. And here are some of the photos that he mentioned. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just say this is some, some rather dark stuff. So here it says, after bonsai and souvenir hunters. And you can see all of these servicemen gathered around these bodies. Uh, here's one that says, just sheer beauty. So that has like a, a twinge of sarcasm to it. Um, so here's another one showing some of these these Marines uh, hunting loot. Okay, here's the morning after the bonsai charge. And you, whenever you look at these pictures, uh, we're not you know necessarily showing approval or anything like that. As a matter of fact, the, the U.S. military really tried to uh, crack down on this practice during the war. But a lot of these Marines had fought at places like Saipan and Tinian and Tarawa and had really become desensitized by their experiences. Plus, uh, you know, the Japanese had been uh, kind of dehumanized even before the war, uh, you know, leading up to combat. And uh, yeah, again, we, we see this really in, in every conflict on, on all sides. But uh, again, what we're trying to do here is uh, observe the artifact, dig into the history, and learn the lessons from it.
right, well, those are just uh, a few of the bullet struck items right here at the Gettysburg Museum of History. Uh, and again, like I said earlier, uh, what these things do is serve as a, a physical reminder to us of uh, just how violent and how awful uh, war can be. These soldiers and Marines uh, brought these things back to serve as reminders of, of where they had been and what they had went through and what they had survived. So yeah, very interesting to, to look at these artifacts and then kind of reflect on the history behind them.